right, page 294 to 295. 294 to 295, did the homework 1 through 18. Let's take a look at some of these. We've got a test coming up Friday. That's lesson 150 for those watching on YouTube. So today we're reviewing, tomorrow we're reviewing Friday test over chapter 7. Question number one, what principle states that to find the total number of outcomes for two separate events, the number of outcomes of each should be multiplied? Sounds very technical and highfalutin. And we even have a technical highfalutin name for it. We call this what then? Um, relative. Hmm, Michael? Is this like a fundamental counting principle? Fundamental counting principle. Fix it there in your book. Fundamental counting principle is basically a fancy way of saying multiply possibilities together to get total possibilities. Number two, what's the name for an event composed of one or more simple events? What is the name for an event composed of one or more simple events, Joel? Compound event. Compound event. Remember we said compound events could include or, or it could include and, right? We said the probability of... Corey or Luciana winning the next PE competition. Well, or is a compound event. Or we say the probability of Corey winning this competition and then Luciana winning the next competition. Well, it's also a compound event. We just treat them differently depending on whether it says or it says and. Number three, a box contains three balls, red, blue, green. What would be the notation for each of the following? A, pulling out a red ball, or B, pulling out a blue or green ball? Um, again, probability notation. So how do we write for letter A, the probability of pulling out a red ball? Uh, Bryson? Uh, P, red. P, red. That's it. And then what about uh, for part B, Bryson, the probability of either pulling out the blue or green ball? Uh, I mean P, uh, blue or green. There we go. That's probability notation. So don't get confused by just writing out the P notation there. Number four, possible creatures for a biology project include the following seven different types of insects you could use, five types of mammals, and eight types of reptiles. Find the total number of possible outcomes for each event. A, you're going to select an insect and a reptile. How many different ways could you pick a single insect and a single reptile upon which to do your project? Corey? 56. 56 different ways. You multiply the seven in different insects you could choose from and the eight different reptiles you could choose from. What about the uh, number of possible outcomes if you're going to select a mammal and a reptile for your project? Luciana? 40. 40. And then what if you're going to select an insect and a mammal and a reptile? You're going to do one of each for your project. Elaine? I think this is wrong, but is it 110? It's not 110. Jalen? Part C on number four. How many possible outcomes are there if you're going to select an insect and a mammal and a reptile? How many different ways could you do your project? 280. 280. We should multiply 7 times 5 times 8 for that one. Number 5, what is the name for the branch of mathematics in which data is collected and studied? Let's go back to Elaine for redemption. Statistics. Statistics, good. That reminds me, I never came back to Ben for redemption. Number 6, which measure of center is more sensitive to outliers, the mean or the median? Median. The median, we just salt and pepper the outliers off the ends, so it's not sensitive to the outliers at all. So that obviously means it is the mean. mean. Think of it this way. With your grades, your grades are always figured by the mean. And if you get one really bad grade, man, it can sink you. Or you get one really good grade, it could really help. So, um, yeah, the mean is sensitive to an outlier. The median, not so much. Uh, number seven, which measure of center is the middle value of a ranked list? Kirsten. Median. That is the median. Very good. Number eight, at a burrito restaurant, customers may choose corn or wheat tortilla, black or pinto beans, chicken, ground beef, or steak as the meat. And how many different burritos could a person make? Joel? Twelve. Twelve. Number nine, at each of three intersections, a driver may choose to turn left, go right, or go straight through. Hmm. Now this one's tricky. Because if you said nine, you were thinking, well, there's three intersections and there's three directions. Careful. At the first intersection, there's three directions. At the next intersection, there's three directions. At the next intersection, there's three directions. So how many possible ways could a driver make those three different choices? I wouldn't say turns because you could go straight through. Class? 27. 27. Um, I saw something interesting out there. This is just, you know, I, I, it was kind of a weird game that a couple of people played. They were in different 
cities or whatever. They were you know, corresponding via phone or something like that. And so they were going to um, go somewhere, but they didn't know where. So they had like a, a coin or something they were going to flip. They were going to drive till they got to a place where they could turn, flip a coin, choose right or left. And they both had to turn right or left at their respective spots. And they did this for a certain number of turns. And then wherever they ended up, that's where they were going to eat, you know, the next closest restaurant that was at that intersection. I would prefer to choose based on how I feel at the moment. Uh, like I feel like eating Mexican, so I'm going to go to, but anyway, every interesting little, you know, random outcome type thing. Well, that's kind of what we've got here. Um, you're going to go right, uh, turn left, or go straight through. Anyway, how many got the 27? You realize there were three choices. It would be like this class. If I say you have to roll a die uh, three times, and each time, of course, you have six numbers on a die, how many different ways could those three rolls go? It's not six times three, class. It's because every roll of the die is another chance for six outcomes. Well, every intersection you come to is another chance for three different directions you could go. Uh, let's go to the number 10 through 14. A bowl contains the following chore cards. I don't know, any of your parents do this? Chore cards? All right. And if there's 20 different wash dishes chore cards in there, 25 clean your room chore cards, 15 vacuum the carpet chore cards, and 20 fold the laundry chore cards. What do we have to figure out first, though, class? Total. Total, total number of chore cards, yeah. How many total chore cards are in that bowl, Ben? 80. 80 total chore cards. We had to find that first. All right, so they wanted to know, what's the probability that you clean your room? Well, first they wanted the probability notation. Well, just P clean or P room. I would take either of those for the probability notation. You could even do P clean room. I'm just lazy and would rather not. Is it compound or not, class? Not compound. It's not compound. There's only cleaning room as the probability. How many clean room cards are there, Ben? 25. 25. Out of how many total, you said? 80. 80. We can reduce both of these, class, by five. 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 Well, obviously, if you take a five out of the top, then we get... Um, five. five. And in the bottom, that one's a little harder because that wasn't on our multiplication tables as kids. But what do we get if we take a five out of the 80? Um, uh, he did not reduce anyone? 16. 16. So we end up with five to 16. Now, if you left this as your answer on a quiz or test, just minus a point. If you're not going to get it all wrong, you did it right. Just do you want to make sure we get all the points? Want to get to the wall of fame? Right, Michael? And, uh, and uh, it, you know, so don't lose the point there. Uh, number 11, wash dishes or vacuum carpets. So, for your probability notation, I do P dishes or vacuum, P dishes or carpets, P wash or vacuum, whatever. Um, or means class? Add. add. So, we're going to add the probability of the dishes and the probability of the vacuum. It is a compound event. Well, how many dishes cards are there, Corey? Uh, 15. No, 20. 20, and that's out of 80. How many uh, vacuum cards are there? 15. 15 out of 80. It says we're going to add. So, initially, we get what? 35 But once again, we can divide the 5 out. The nice thing is, class, we already divided 5 out of 80 once. So we already know what that's going to be. 16. 16. And we know, well, obviously, 35 divided by 5 is. 70. So the hard part, dividing 80 by 5, we've already done. 7 to 16 should be our answer. How many had that 4 number? 11. How many at least got the 35 to 80? Maybe just didn't think to reduce. All right, number 12, fold laundry and then a wash dishes card. So you pick a card, fold the laundry. Okay, put the card back, go fold the laundry. Now what do I got to do? Oh, I got to wash the dishes. What's the probability? You got to pick two chore cards that day. And um, well, what's the probability? We would say P laundry and dishes or P fold and wash or you're really not lazy, which is sad. P fold laundry and wash dishes. Anyway, it says and class, we got to <laughs> multiply. So uh, the, the laundry, how many laundry cards we got here, uh, Bryson? Uh, laundry. Uh, 25. Oh, yeah, uh, 20. 20 out of uh -huh, 80. 80. Says and, so we're multiplying here. How many uh, dishes cards? 25. <laughs> you guys just got to read the little blurb there. Oh, 20. 20, 20 out of 80. <laughs> by the way, both times, Bryce, and we can quickly reduce both numbers by knocking off the zeros. zeros. And for that matter, we could reduce two eighths in each case down to one fourth. One four. So if you multiply a fourth by a fourth, you get one sixteen. One to sixteen. How many are one to sixteen odds of a fold laundry and then a wash dishes? 
All right, number 13, clean your room, then vacuum the carpet. So you draw a card, clean your room. How many of you, if it, you got a card that said clean your room, you're like, that's nothing. My room's already pretty much clean. Mm -hmm. How many would say, if I got a clean room card, I'm going to be in there for like five hours. It's not going to be good. Ah, okay, we have confession time. Confession's good for the soul. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> so they say, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> clean room card. What's the probability of a clean room card, Jalen? 25. 25 to 80. That's the most cards in there. That's something mom really wants you to do, apparently. And then, so we're going to multiply it, the vacuum carpets. How many vacuum carpet cards? 15 to 80. Now, I know I can at least knock fives out all over the place, right, class? So take a five out of the 25. That gives me a five. Five out of the 80 class gives me 16. Five out of the 15 gives me three. Five out of the 80 gives me another 16. And that's as far as we can cancel. Well, the 5 times 3 ain't too bad, Jalen. 15. The 16 times 16 is a little more work. Do you happen to have that already? 256. 256. Excellent. How many had a 15 to 256 chance of getting a clean room card and then getting a vacuum carpet card? Questions on 13. And number 14, a full laundry card or a wash dishes card. Well, it says or, class, so we're going to add. add. Probability of a full laundry card, Luciana. Uh, 20 over 80. 20 to 80. Uh, and then a wash dishes card. 20 over 80. And it says or, so we said we're going to add to initially get. 20 to 80. And this reduces really nicely. One half. One to two. About a one to two chance that you're going to get a full laundry or a wash dishes card. How many have one to two for the last one, number 14? Questions on those probabilities. Number 15. Now we get into the more recent stuff again. Give us a set of data, and they want to know what's the mean, what's the median, what's the mode, and what's the range. Four different answers here on number 15. What would be a really smart thing to do right off the bat on number 15? Elaine? To put them in order. Put them in order. What's the term for that? Ranking. To rank the data. Let's rank the data real quick, Elaine. Tell me what to write. 18, 20, 22, 23, 24, 26, 30. 31, 31. First of all, class, do we see any outliers? No. No, which means that which of those mean, median, mode is a really good indicator of what's normal? Mean. The mean. If there's no outliers, the mean is really your best estimator of the middle. The only time the mean is bad is if you've got a crazy outlier. Like if one of these numbers was like a, a 6, or if there was a 50, or something like that. You get the idea. It's just one number that's really big or really small. Frankly, one of each even could, could kind of do that. Uh, but the mean, I'm going to come to later because I'm lazy. Let's do the, uh, well, for that matter, let's do the mode first. That requires no math. What is the mode here, Elaine? 31. 31. It's the only number that occurs more than once. Now, class, does that mean that 31 is normal for this set of data? Mm -hmm. No, it's all the way on the high end, isn't it? So that's why the mode is not usually a good indicator of normal. It's not here. But it, there is still a mode of 31. Um, the range is the next easiest math, I would think, because all we have to do, class, is subtract. subtract. What two numbers, Elaine? Um, 31, or, yeah, 31 minus 18. And when we subtract 31 minus 18, what is our range? 13. 13. So that's not too bad either. That just tells you how spread out the data is. That's not an indicator of normalcy. The median doesn't require a whole lot of math. We can salt and pepper a couple off this end, a couple off that end, another couple off this end, another couple off that end. And, well, pretty obvious median class, 24. How many good so far? And now the hard part, <laughs> right, is uh, adding these together. So what I like to do, this is just me, is I like to kind of bundle numbers together. It's like bundling home and auto. So I got this, just kidding. All right, so anyway, I look at 24 and 26, and I'm like, those add really easily, class. 50. 50, those come to a nice, easy number. I already like the fact that 30, and 20 are easy to bundle, 50 as well. Um, for that matter, the 22 and 18 are too bad to bundle, 40. Um, the 31s aren't beautiful, but they're easy to add at least, 62. And then I've got this random 23 that has no friends, so I'll just write it down as well. Now, the pair of 50s is easy to bundle, 100. Now, be careful here. 40 and 60 would be another easy 100, right? But it's 40 and 62, so it's 102 and 23. And now when I add, I get? 5, Now, again, do you have to add this way? No. If you feel like that's harder, that's just how my brain ticks. So I'm kind of letting you see inside my brain. That's how I quickly add numbers. So if you say that works for you and that'll work well for the way your brain ticks, go for it. If you're like, 
Mr. Desk, I'm better with 8 and 2 is 10 and 3 is 13, 17, 20, 3, 20, 3, 20, 4, 25, right down to 5. Carry the 2. 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 16, 19, 22. Maybe for you that's faster. I don't know. Now I'm starting to wonder if that is that. But that's just not how my brain takes. I would go, I go to grouping numbers together and bundling them together. Anyway, the point is you get 225. How many got 225 when you added them all together? And then we got to divide that sum by what class? Nine. Nine, because there's a total of nine add-ins, nine data values here. And it divides, I believe, yeah, it'll divide evenly by nine because the sum of the digits is nine. Um, and when we subtract, we should get class? How many at 25? As your mean. All right, now again, as I said before, there's so many places you could make mistakes. You could make little division mistakes. You could make addition errors. Be sure to show your work so I can see that even if you mess up the addition or division, I can see that you at least knew how to do it, even if you didn't quite do it correctly. Questions on this problem? How many went four for four on your answers for 15? You got all of 15 correct. Okay, good. Well, let's take a look at number 16 now. And uh, just go quickly through the answers. Kirsten, number 16, what did you get for your mean? Um, 71.2. Hmm, yeah, something definitely went wrong there. Um, so uh, look at the numbers for a moment, right? They're all mostly in what number range? They're all basically in the 40s, right? So does 17 make a lot of sense? Something's not right there. So we can clearly tell that ain't it. Um, what did you get for your mean, Joel? 43. Should have come out evenly to 43 there. Um, you add them all together. What did you get when you added them, Kirsten? Yeah, so some, yeah, so that, that's where the problem was. Number 16, hmm. yeah, should have added up to uh, 344, is that right, Joel? Yes. You added to get 344 and then divided by 8 to get the 43? Mm. All right, um, what about your median? Let me go back to Kirsten, your median, your middle value. 44. 44 is correct. What about your mode? 46. 46 and your range? 17. Mm. Mm, okay, so not 17. What should we have subtracted for the range, Michael? Uh, 33 from 52. Yeah, 52 is your biggest, 33 is your smallest. We should have subtracted those numbers to get my goal. 14. 14? Oh my, Jalen. 19. 19. 19. <laughs> 19 should be all right. So again, on number 16, your mean it should be 43, your median 44, your mode 46, and your range 19. Number 17, they made a dot plot of popular farm animals. What do you own more of at your particular farm? And uh, so we see the data there. And according to this class, um, what is the mode of uh, types of farms around here? Let's go to Ben. Chicken. Chicken farms have the most, clearly. Number 18, we have a frequency table. 125 students took a test. We see the results from the history test. Now, that doesn't mean 125 kids were in one class, but... Uh, for instance, if this was like my school, we had about 125 seventh graders. They were just in four different classes. Okay, so um, they had 20 A's, 29 B's, 50 C's, 20 D's, and 6 F's on this history test. 125 total kids tested. That's a frequency table because it tells you how many. We want to make class A relative. relative frequency table, which tells us the yeah. Percent is a way of showing what? Probability. There we go. A relative frequency table class shows probability. probability. If I were to pick one of these 125 students test at random just to look at it, what's the probability I'd pick a test where a student made an A, B, C, D, or F? Okay? And granted, this is in an area where they still do Ds, obviously, here in Georgia. The D has been removed. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, back when I was in school. <laughs> All right, so anyway. I'm going to put it vertically because that's the way I like to see the numbers. They show it horizontally. There's nothing wrong with that per se. I just, I like vertical. And this is history test five. 
We said there were 20 A's, 29 B's, 50 C's, 20 D's, 6 F's, 125 kids total. Again, class, we call this a frequency table, because all it does is list the data that's there. We want to convert it to probabilities, which is called a relative frequency table. So history, test 5, we still want A, B, C, D, F. But our total isn't going to be 125. In a relative frequency table, class, what is the total? One. One or 100%. Either one or, if you're doing percents, 100%. All right. What we want to do is we want to start with the easiest division possible. What is the easiest division to do on this table? Corey? Um, I feel like the C's. How many started with the C's? You're like 50 looks like it's really easy to divide by 125. I think it is 50 over 125 because we can easily divide what out of top and bottom class? 25. We can easily divide out a 25. Think quarters. 50 cents is how many quarters? A dollar 25 is how many quarters? Five. Five quarters. Two fifths, we already know what that is as a decimal. Point four. So I'm going to write point four zero. I'm going to give myself two decimal places, I guess, for that matter, one point zero zero. Or as a percent class, 40%. You pick which way you want to do that. To me, that's super easy. The next easiest number I see on this lineup class would be 20. And the great thing about 20 is there's two of them. So once I get one, I already know the other. So let's take the 20s, both of them, and divide that by 125. But first, reduce. Make it smaller, class. We can divide top and bottom both by five, five this time. And in the top, we get four. four. And in the bottom, we get 25. 25. Now remember, if we're trying to make a decimal, or better yet, if we're trying to make a percent, percent means hundreds. I could make this hundreds if I multiply top and bottom now by four. four. How many hundreds, class? Sixteen. Sixteen hundreds. So obviously that's sixteen percent for both of these. Or as a decimal class, one one six. Now if you're like, oh, Mr. Dasky, the hundreds thing always throws me off. Okay, that's fine. Four divided by twenty-five. Add a couple zeros. It, you'll still get point one six. How many got sixteen percent or point one six for both the A's and the D's? Questions on how we should have done that. Does it make sense how to do that? Now I got a tough choice. B's or F's. Which number looks easier, 29 or 6? Six? 6. I'm a fan of 6. Let's do 6. All right, I'm going to come over here. 6 divided by 125, because I don't see any reducing, right? And uh, so, uh, well, here we go. How many times would 1 go into 6? Six? 6, but there's all this extra five. stuff. So maybe 5, but there's still all this extra four, stuff. Four, maybe four. 4. Well, one, two, three digits, one, two, three digits. I line the four up here, don't I? I'm just gonna put a zero. Four times five. Four times two plus two. Four times one plus one. Five. We subtract, we get a hundred. That is smaller than 125, bring down the zero. How many times one go into 10? Eight. Nine, 10, but he's, let's try it. Let's see what happens. Okay, eight times five. Four. Carry the four. Eight times two plus four. Eight times one plus two? Ten. Ten. And it works out to point zero four eight. Huh. Well, you know what I could do is I could just go three digits on all of these. Point zero four eight, which has a percent would be class four point eight percent. If you said approximately five percent, I'm okay with that. And what that means though is this answer is also gonna end up being rounded. Does that make sense? Because what we're missing then is what we already got 16, 40, 16, and 4.8. How much percent is that so far, anyone? Um, um, I'm getting a 76.8% so far. Oh. Yeah. So we just have to subtract that from 100.0%. And it would give us how much leftover percent? 23.2%. 23. 23. or 0.232. Now again, if you want to just say 0.23, and 0 0.05, 23% and 5%, that's fine. Okay, I'm cool with that because we a lot of times just do the two decimal places. But there's a relative frequency table. If I pick a test at random out of this stack of 125 kids' tests, what's the odds that I pull out a D, class? 16%. 16%. What's the odds I pull out a, uh, a C or an A? 56%, right? Because we'll add the 40 and the 16 together, right? Questions on relative frequency table. All right. Flip back if you would, or flip back. Yeah, flip back if you would to page 292. 
flip back and do it page 292. Let's get some questions here. Question number one says, what is the term for the likelihood of an event? Bryson. Probability. Probability. Write that in. Probability. Trust you knew that also. Number two. What is, let's just take letter A, the probability of an event that is certain. The probability of an event that is certain. Elaine? One. One. Letter B, the probability of an event that is impossible. What's that probability, Luciana? Zero. Zero. Letter C, the probability of all possibilities associated with an event. Corey? Mm -hmm. One. Number three, every probability is between what two values, Ben? Um, uh, one and zero. One and zero, or zero and one, depending on the direction you want to look at it. Uh, number four. Harry has a pencil case that has pencils, pens, and highlighters in it. He didn't steal them from his mom's desk. What would be the probability notation for each of the following? A, selecting a pen. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Highlighter, I mean, is it right? Anyway, um, don't worry about it, you two. Um, what would be the probability notation for each of the following? How would we write? I'm, I'm too lazy to do this, but letter A, how would I write the probability of selecting a pen? Kirsten? P, parentheses, pen. P, and then a parentheses, pen. Uh, letter B, the, pr the uh, probability of selecting a highlighter or a pencil, Jalen? Uh, P, parentheses, highlighter, or pencil. Good, P, and then a parentheses, highlighter, or pencil. That's a lot of writing, I'm too lazy. Number five, <laughs> find the total number of outcomes for randomly selecting a letter from the alphabet. Well, how many different outcomes could there be if I'm going to pick a letter of the alphabet class? Mm -hmm. 26, let's not make that too hard. Letter B. The probability of selecting a letter from the alphabet and then a single digit number. How many outcomes if I pick a letter of the alphabet and then I'm going to pick a single digit number, let's assume zero is a single digit number. How many outcomes, how many different ways could I pick it? For instance, if, um, if uh, what was your basketball number, Michael? 21. Was there somebody on the basketball team? I thought you had a single digit number. Zero. You were zero? No, there was somebody. There was somebody who was yeah. number zero. Was that the only single digit basketball no, player we had? No, Peter, Peter had five. One. Peter had five. Okay, so Peter, if he's picking, he's like, I want the letter P for Peter, and I want five because that's my basketball number, P5. Okay, well, that's <laughs> how many different ways could we do that, though, right? Uh, what you got, Michael? Uh, number of outcomes if you're going to pick a single letter of the alphabet and then a single digit number. What do we have to do to find possible outcomes, class? Multiply, Multiply right? And how many letters of the alphabet are there, class? 20. And how many single digit numbers are there? 10. 10, 0 through 9. So how many possible outcomes, Michael? 200, 1 to 260. There's 260 different ones. Now, if picking P5 is one out of 260 possibilities, oh. right? It wasn't finding probabilities, just how many outcomes are there? 260. What about a letter from the alphabet or a or a single digit number? Oh, how many outcomes if you're either going to pick a letter of the alphabet or a single digit number? Oh, well now that says or class, what would I have to do? Uh, Add. Even though it's not probability, it's still possibilities, right? So if you made a pool of all the letters of the alphabet and all the single digit numbers, how many possibilities are there? All. 36. 26 and 10 more. 36. Uh, number six, interesting question. When collecting data, what's the name for a small portion of the population? The portion of the population you actually survey or question or research. Joel? Well, it's, we, we can think of it as a group, but there's actually a name for it. The population is the entire group we're studying, but the group we actually survey is referred to, Jalen, as a... Sample. For instance, I uh, got an invitation just yesterday, checking my email, and the credit union I'm a part of said, hey, we would like to do a survey. If you participate, we'll give you five bucks. Oh. I'm like, well, I mean, how long could this possibly take? I mean, five bucks ain't bad. And then they even said the survey will take 10 to 12 minutes. So be me, the math guy, I'm like, okay, 10 to 12 minutes. Okay, that's about a fifth of an hour. Five bucks for a fifth of an hour, that's 25 bucks an hour. Yeah, 25 bucks an hour I can do a survey. And so I fill in a few preliminary questions like, oh, we got too many people in your demographic group already. So people my age who spend money on the things I spend money on, they already have a lot of people. They want people who are different from me for their survey because they want it to be randomized. They want a lot of different age groups and spending patterns and things like that for their survey. So I didn't end up getting five bucks. Kind of sad. 
But I've had the chance potentially to be part of not the entire population of the US, but a part of the class sample. sample. The sample. Number seven, what is the name for a collection of facts or information, Luciana? Data or data, depending on how you pronounce it. Number eight, one of these days I'm going to find out a definite answer on how it's supposed to be pronounced instead of just saying it both ways all the time. Number eight, mean and median are examples of what? Hmm. We call them blank. Three words. Blank of blank. Mean, median, mode could also be considered this as well. Measures of center. There we go. Measures of center. What's normal? But measures of center is the technical name for that. There we go. I hadn't used that term in a little bit. Number nine, what's the name of a data value that is significantly different from the rest of the data values? Bryson? Uh, 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 no. um. <laughs> oh, I'm blinking. Uh, Jalen? Outlier. Outlier. O U T L I E R, an outlier. Because uh, it lies outside all the other, where all the other numbers would be. Number 10. What term is used to describe data that is in numerical order? We come back to Bryson for redemption. Ranking or ranked. There we go. Ranked data. Number 11. If you're finding the median and there are two middle values, what do you have to do? There's two middle values when you're trying to find the median. What do you have to do, Michael? Uh, add the two values and divide by two. Or in a word, average them. Or I said two words. Oh. <laughs> average them. Find their mean. Uh, number 12, which measure of center can be used for categorical data? Yes. For instance, if I asked you what kind of pets you have, and Kirsten has a yeah. cat, and Jalen has a dog, dog and uh, Elaine has? Li lizard and you have dog and you have nothing and you have nothing and you have two dogs dog you have who <laughs> reptile reptilian creature and you have dog okay well there's no numbers involved there right y'all weren't giving me numbers what would be the way we'd figure out what's normal what measure of center would we use class the mode, mode. what occurs most often so which measure of center can be used for categorical data? Class the uh, mode. Categorical meaning it ain't numbers. Number 13, which type of probability is based on what was observed happening? Which type of probability is based on what was already observed to have happened? Class? Experimental. Experimental. Good, Kirsten. Experimental. On the contrasting note, class, which type of probability would be based on what could happen if blind chance took over? Theoretical. theoretical probability. So theoretical probability, for instance, yesterday we were talking about, or in our homework rather, you were asked about the chore cards, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if you don't look at the chore cards, you just pick blindly, that's theoretical probability. But if you're able to flip through the chore cards, number one, we don't need 80 of them, uh, <laughs> but if you're able to flip through the chore cards and pick, well, now it comes down to experimental probability. What do you usually want to do if you have to pick one of those four? By the way, how many of you would say clean the room is the easiest of the four tasks? How many say washing dishes ain't bad? I'll take washing dishes. How many say vacuuming carpets is probably the easy one? To me, I would vacuum carpets. Like, you instantly see benefit, and it took very little physical labor on your part. I don't mind vacuuming at all. Dishes, not so much. Anyway, uh, let's drop all the way, or go all the way across the page. Number 27. And look at what they did for you on 27 and 28. They already added the numbers for you. They already ranked the data for you. Oh, are they so nice. So you should be able to do number 27 and 28 in about two minutes. Go. Do 27 and 28. They've already added it. They've already ranked it. This should be stupid easy on 27 and 28. Find the mean, median, mode, and range. Mean, median, mode, and range, 27, 28. She's not finished. Mm -hmm. At 27 and 28, find the mean, find the median, find the mode, find the range. All four answers for each. Michael, did you say you're a cobra? 
<laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> you, don't, you don't actually have a cobra, do you? I don't know. I want one. You want oh. I also heard dragon. <laughs> <laughs> People watching on YouTube are like, yep, there's one in every class. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, they have so more. does it count if you oh. used to have yeah. fish, but they're now in the ground? They have become fertilizer. Yeah. We'll just go with dog. We'll just say dog was the mode. That was easier that way. Yes, ma'am. Did you say to do the mean? 27 and 28. Find mean, median, mode, and range. They've already added it for you, so all you have to do is the division. Would you start to add them again? Yeah, yeah. You don't listen too well, do you? <laughs> I just I said like two or three times. They've already done the addition. It wasn't that nice of them. I guess I wouldn't know. I didn't actually say stand when you're done. But thank you. <laughs> Number 27, for the mean, they've already added it to get 270. What do we have to divide by, Elaine? Um, nine. Nine. And what do we get for the mean, Elaine? 30. 30. What do we get for the median when we salt and pepper to the middle number, Joel? 27. Yeah, stop. 27 is correct. What did we get for the mode, the number that occurred the most often? Corey? 24. Yeah, there were three of those. That definitely stands out from the rest. And then what's the range of the data set? Uh, ben? Uh, range, uh, 27. Careful on your borrowing, 17. We make sure you borrow from the four, make it a three, so three minus two is one. But 17 is our range. How many got all four answers, correct? Is there an outlier class? No. no. So we would just say that the best measure of center is which of those numbers? Mean. 30. The mean is the good indicator of what's normal. Number 28. Uh, they already got the sum, 152. What do we have to divide by to get the mean? Luciana? Um, divide, by eight. divide by 8 to get? 19. 19 for our mean. The median, though, when you salt and pepper, you end up with two middle numbers. What are the two middle numbers we wind up with, Kirsten? 16 and 19. 16 and 19. So we have to average those. So our mean ends up being, our median ends up being 17.5. 17.5. What's the mode of the data set, Jalen? Uh, 14. 14. And what about the range of this data set, Bryson? Uh, All right, real quick, what do we have to do? You said the range, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have to subtract uh, 28 minus 12. To get? Uh, 16. 16 is our range. Very good. How many got all four of those answers correct? All right, 29 and 30. 29 and 30. This time you have to add them yourself. This time you have to rank them yourself. So this is doing more like what you'd have to do on quizzes tests coming up, for instance, Friday. So add them all up. Also rank them 29 and 30. This time when you finish with all four answers for both, Stand beside your desk. Actually, for sake of time, just do 29. Okay, we're running out of time, so we'll skip 30. We'll just do 29, which is the easier of the two, I think, anyway. Corey's got. Oh! oh. oh. Michael and Elaine and Bryson. <laughs> Slightly terrifying there, Michael. <laughs> and Kirsten and Jalen. All right, have a seat, have a seat. Let's take a look at these. Um, what did you get when you added them up, Corey? Uh, 350. 350, and you divided by? Seven. To get? 
Uh, 50. 50 as your mean. Mm -hmm. All right, then you had to rank them if you hadn't already done that. And salt and pepper, so you found the middle value, which was? 50. 50 for the median. Your mode was? Nine. There was no mode. And your range was? 80. 80. Great job on 20. And how many also had the same answers, just not quite as fast as Corey? Three. Questions on any of those answers? You need to see something worked at. out. Sorry, that was a very oh. high throw. <laughs> Backhand toss did not work well at all. Relinquish. <laughs> is this airhead is going all over the room, flying through the air. Uh, yes, sir. Did you say we were doing 29? 29. Oh. Okay. Anyway, let's turn the page. <laughs> turn the page. Number 31. At a glance, what's the mode class? Chocolate. Chocolate. Barely, though, right? Strawberry's right behind it. Um, let's drop down to number 32. Number 32, read the blurb above those charts for me, Jalen. 140 men and women were asked to rate how important air conditioning and power steering were to them. The respondents were given the options of choosing no, little, no slash little importance, important or very important. Of those surveyed, 35 said no to little importance, 40 said it was important and 65 said it was very important. All right, at your seats, the first chart is a frequency table. This should take about 15 seconds. Do the frequency table. Good, Kirsten. Good, Corey. Good, Michael. Literally, class, all we have to do next to no slash little is write 35. 35. Next to important, we write 40. 40. Next to very important, we write 65. 65. All right, now, I'm going to let the ladies, since they got the hard one yesterday. Ladies, you do, which one do you want? Um, important. Important, yeah. You want the middle one. You guys do the important. <laughs> and let's give, um, let's give this middle row the very important. And let's give our last row the no importance to little importance. Find the relative frequency. Find the relative frequency. I would reduce first. All of them reduce. The ladies reduces by more, but you guys also reduces. And we'll do two decimal places. conditioning and or power steering not important to you like that's crazy I got one to four which comes to what percent class 25 percent or 0.25 and that was this row mm -hmm. the middle row you had the very important which was 65 to 140 I reduced that not nearly as well I divided up 0.464 or 0.46 or class 46 percent and then ladies you're 40 over 14 reduced pretty nice or 40 over 140 reduced to two sevens 0.285 or it rounds to? 25, 29. 29 percent. There we go. So 25 percent, no to little, or 0.25 since they're doing decibels. 0.29 for the important, 0.46 for very important questions on relative frequency tables. Clear your desk except for a clean sheet of paper and a pencil. Clear your desk except for a clean sheet of paper and a pencil. Let me have a chance to make sure before the test, even before tomorrow's review, make sure we're good on this recent stuff. Heading into test day, I want to make sure we're good to go. So quiz 29, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, you are noticing we are skipping quiz 28. That's a little redundant. So we skipped over 28. We're doing quiz 29 today. 
So blank sheet of paper and a pencil, everything else away. No, you'll be fine. Don't mind. <laughs> All right, when you get to quiz, first and last name in the name spot, today's date in the date spot, and today is 410 24. 410 24. First and last name in the name spot, 410 20, you need one of those, there we go. 410 24 on the date spot. Let's take a look at the quiz together very quickly. Uh, numbers one through six. Numbers one through six. Matching. Choose the letter of the correct answer. You notice there's six questions. There's only four answers. Obviously, answers have to be used more than once. So you can't cross something out and be like, okay, I'm done with that one now. Okay, so answers will be used multiple times. For number seven through ten, they did not uh, do number seven for you. You do number seven, but they did do half the work on number eight, you'll notice. Michael, do you notice on number eight, they did half the work for you, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Number 11 and number 12, come on now, don't make those hard. Turn it over, flip it over. Notice they have already done most of the frequency table. You just have to get the bottom number. So everybody see that? You do not have to complete the relative frequency table. All you have to do is figure out what number 14 is, and you should all already know what 15 is. Does that make sense? So you're not finding strawberry, vanilla, or other. All you're doing is finding chocolate, kind of like a moment ago, each row only took one of them. Or you're only doing one of them, okay? We don't want to, we ain't got time to do the whole thing. And then 16 and 17, don't make those hard. All right, you may begin. We'll end the video here, but if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget test in lesson 150 over chapter seven.